Hello fellow YouTubers, Truth Seekers, and Mandela Affected. I'm Dark Wolf, and this is Dark Wolf's Den. I'd like to thank everybody for coming out today and checking out what we're doing here. I've decided to start a new segment, or try to start a new segment anyway. I'm trying to bring you guys stuff every day now. Uh, doing good so far. We'll see how it works out. So, uh, Right now we're going to do News of the Week. This will be my attempt to bring you guys the more odd news stories of the week. The ones that slip through the cracks and don't get a lot of the mainstream coverage. Although we might cover mainstream issues, who knows? I got a lot of stuff lined up for you guys today, so let's get started. First, like I said, this is Dark Wolf's Den. You can go check out everything we do over here at the Den. Um, we've got all kind of different videos, playlists. Uh, we got the Mandela Effect Theory Series. We've got the Psychic Series, which will be in the Mystery Series. We've got so much stuff coming for you guys. And this page is not loading. There we go. Anyway, like I said, we got so much stuff for you guys here. I really, really hope you guys enjoy what you see and come back to check us out even more. All right. So first, I found this story about two days ago. And was very, very intrigued by it. And I really had to share it with you guys. So, Traveling Museum of Paranormal and Occult, the world's only mobile museum of haunted artifacts, has launched the first ever initiative to 3D scan and compile a database of the paranormally active objects. But there's some problems. The project is confusing the ghost and producing haunted 3D prints. Quote, uh, the occult museum director Greg Newkirk says, In hindsight, I guess we should have anticipated this, but when it comes to working with haunted artifacts in new, unexplored ways, you never know what's going to happen. We're attempting something that's never been done before, laying the groundwork for future study of the par paranormal active objects. He's in, uh, referring to unintended consequences of the haunted object 3D scanning initiative, an effort to build a comprehensive database of the world's most haunted artifacts, like I mentioned earlier. Um, one of the most famous cases here, and one of them that I just thought was really crazy in this article, uh, I really wanted to share with you guys. Some objects just don't want to be scanned. Check this out, guys. Matthew says, gesturing to a large... African idol with a history of causing intense nightmares, which they've nicknamed Billy. <laughs> Scary Billy, okay. In the case of Billy, which is right here, this crazy African mask, he kept literally putting up a wall in front of his face every time we tried to scan it. We had to sit down and conduct an EVP session with him to find out that he was just concerned about the scanning process and didn't understand what we were trying to do to him. Once the process of performing a 3D scan was explained to the idol, along with the team's reason for conducting the scan, Matthew says that Billy finally allowed his image to be cataloged. In all, the process of scanning the haunted artifact took over 30 hours, most of which curators say account for negotiations with the attached spirit. And I don't mean to laugh, it's just you don't find news articles like this. It is so great to see this in a real news article. This is from WeekendWeird.com, um, but it is verifiable. I guarantee you that. So if you want to check this, this article out, go to WeekendWeird.com. They've got a lot of good stuff over there. I just thought that article right there was really, really crazy. They had to do an EVP session with this mask in order to convince it to let it be scanned because it kept blocking out its own face. So I thought that was great. wanted to share that with you guys. Next we have, okay, I've heard this story for a while now. Uh, there's been another prize. It was a million dollars. This million dollar prize got retracted after the, uh, the person retired. What prize am I talking about? Well, right now there's a $100,000 prize waiting for anyone who can scientifically prove that they have psychic uh, abilities. Um, if you can see the future, talk to the dead, read minds, this prize is waiting for you as long as you can prove it. Submit your superpower to scientific testing, and if you pass, you'll be the first ever 
to win the prize in its 37-year history. The Australian Skeptic Society have offered the money to be awarded to anyone who can prove they have psychic or paranormal powers since it was founded in Melbourne in 1980. You get a lot of claims of people being able to read people's minds or heal people from a distance, Australian Skeptics Victoria's Terry Kelly said, adding that most balked at the challenge of confirming their claim. It actually has to be proven in a way that any other scientific claim would be proven. And strangely enough, most of this team is not what you would think it would be made up of. Most of it are lawyers, uh, gamblers, magicians, and comedians. Uh, magicians have to balance their work as skeptics with their professional code, which demands they never reveal their tricks to the public. Comedians, he said, make a living out of seeing through crap. And the movement counted names such as Tim Minchin among its supporters. Professional gamblers were really superstitious, Mr. Kelly said, and understand about probability and chance. The most common uh, entries into this are the water diviners. The then Canadian-American magician James Randi launched Australian Skeptics when he thought when he was bought out by entrepreneur Dick Smith to test the claims of water diviners. I'm sorry, brought out, not bought out, brought out. The then $50,000 prize was short of a U.S. $1 million offered by Randy's own foundation. However, it has not been offered since his retirement in 2015, which I was mentioning earlier. Water diviners have since been the most active participants in the $100,000 challenge, as it is known submitting their dowsing techniques to scientific testing on several occasions without success. They say that paying the winner would be worth the money just to prove that the actual phenomenon does really exist. All right, moving on. So what I'd like to talk about now, real briefly, are hurricanes. I know this is really, really big right now. I understand it's hurricane season. We're going to get some hurricanes. I get that. That's not an issue. My issue is the fact that every hurricane we're getting are on the maximum end of the scale. Okay? Not a Cat 1, not a Cat 3. I'm talking about a Category 5 plus hurricane each time we've had one this year. So far we're at 2, and there's another one right behind Irma called Jose. So, it only goes up to Category 5. Right now, Irma is coming close to what would be Category 6, and that don't even exist. They might have to create, and this is only speculation, they might have to actually create a new category for hurricanes. Category 6. That is how strong these storms have become. And I have a theory on this. This is all speculation. This is all theory. From here out, what you will hear will be theory. Bear with me. So, if anybody has ever seen Dabu Seven's page, if you haven't, please go check this guy out. I've followed him for a couple years now. He's a great newscaster. He does a weekly news every Friday night, a live stream. He covers a great number of topics, and everything he covers has to do with mankind and, and helping mankind and getting the news and the truth out to the people. It's people like this that I have a very high respect for. So please check his channel out. I highly, highly recommend him. One thing he reports on are these mimic anomalies. This is called the mimic map. It shows all the moisture in the earth, in the world, around the world, over the earth. <laughs> I hope I've clarified that correctly. But as you see here, there's these lines. These lines shouldn't be here. These are from, we think, radio waves. We don't know some type of signal waves being shot. Presumably from Antarctica upwards. Most of these shoot out into the Atlantic Ocean. And it just so happens that all these hurricanes are coming from the Atlantic Ocean. I theorize that there's more than one heart facility, just like there's more than one CERN facility, or colliding facility anyway. And I theorize that these are being used to literally manipulate the weather. I'm not saying America's doing it. It could be China, it could be Korea, it could be Africa, it could be anybody, anybody. Although China has been very open and audible about their 
systems and what they do. So, with that said, I do think that these hurricanes are being manipulated somehow. I don't have any evidence except these mimic map pictures that you can go back on Dogo7 and many other YouTubers are starting to pick this up and notice these anomalies on these maps. So if you're more interested in this, please go check this out. I highly, highly encourage it. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been another episode of Dark Wolf's Den. I'd like to thank everybody for coming out. I really, really appreciate everyone. I really hope that everyone has a lovely day, morning, evening, wherever you may be. And always remember, stay awake, but dare to dream. Bye, everybody.